Hello, I'm Gemma and this is Nonfic Books and I'm continuing non-fiction in November with a review of Sargent's Women, Four Lives Behind the Canvas by Donna M. Lucy. This was published this year by W.W. W. Norton and is 250 pages long. And this was sent to me for review by W.W. W. Norton and I have to thank Chloe who sent it to me because it is absolutely brilliant. I love this book, spoiler alert, it's amazing. So, Sergeant's Women, as it's suggests by the title, Four Lives Behind the Canvas, Donna M. Lucy looks at the lives of four women who were painted by Sergeant. Oh well, that is what it says on the tin. What she actually does is discusses three lives of women that were painted by Sergeant and one life of the sister of someone who was painted by Sergeant, which I'll get into that in a minute. The first one, Elsie Palmer, was a fabulously interesting character. She is not overly beautiful and her portrait really sort of was had a very mixed reaction. Some people loved it and some people hated it because obviously it's not a very classical depiction of beauty and it's very enigmatic. She is not sort of selling herself very much in it. She had a very bizarre life, um, sometimes raised in the ro in the mountains in the US, other times in smaller parts of the UK. She had a very turbulent relationship with her father, who was quite domineering, but who wasn't there very much, and her mother very much spoiled her, trying to make her into another little mother for the two younger daughters. So there was always quite a divide there between her and her sisters. After her mother died, they moved back to the States to be with their father, and this is where things started getting a bit more tricky for her because her younger sister came into play and realised that Elsie was actually having an affair with, whether or not it was sexual, there was certainly a romantic affair going on with a married man of her best friend. And the younger sister then basically swoops in, steals her lover, and eventually ends up living with him as his acknowledged mistress in Paris. So it was, she was absolutely fascinating and that story was brilliant. We then have, that is the painting of a Sally Fairchild, but we don't actually learn very much about Sally Fairchild because we end up looking more at her sister, Lysia, who was an artist who was married to another artist, which the family did not approve of. So she never really asked the, or well, she refused to ask the family for money for a while. And when she did eventually, Sally said no, because at that point, Sally ended up in control of the finances. They had a very, the, the two artists have a very sort of difficult life. He was very much, oh, art for art's sake, let's not think about the money. And she actually being really relatively practical in realizing that her and her children needed to eat, ended up going around the country, spending time away from her children, doing uh, miniatures and small portraits for commissions to earn enough money that her family could survive because her husband, while a talented artist, was completely and utterly impractical. She was absolutely fascinating. I loved learning about her life, but I wish if um, Lucy had done a story about her, she had at least discussed a little bit more what was happening in her life because it seemed a little bit of a segue to just sort of shoehorn her in there under the pretenses of um, behind the canvas. I would have liked to know a little bit more about the women actually in the painting because it obviously seems like there are records of her. Sorry, just moving my foot because it's gone numb. And I would have liked a little bit more information, but she was fabulous to learn about. And uh, Donna Lucy's writing in this is just beautiful. Like, I absolutely flew through it. Let's find the next picture. Actually, the next picture is the one on the cover, which is Elizabeth Chandler. Isn't she, isn't she gorgeous? Um, sorry, I, I just absolutely love that picture. Let's find the... Uh... Apparently, I'm a big fan of Sargent. I never knew. I never knew I was in Sargent's, Sargent's portraiture, but I am. I don't like his watercolours as much. But the one thing I would recommend, if you do read a book or this book or a book like it about artists or musicians, have a computer or a phone or something near you so that you can look up other pictures mentioned or play pieces of music that are mentioned because so many portraits and people were mentioned in here that had been painted. I found that it really sort of aided my understanding and just enriched my whole experience to be able to look up those pictures at the same time. So, where are we? Do, do, do. Is 
wonderful portrait and I think she is fabulous. Weirdly, considering I seemed to like her life the most, I can't remember very much about her life. I know that she was um, ill when she was younger and she was strapped to a board for a while, which ended up doing absolutely nothing about it. Um, she was viewed as all very good, but then had a, a scandalous affair, but I can't quite remember the details. So she is sort of as enigmatic as she looks like she could be. And then the final one was painted by Sargent not once, but twice. Isabella Stewart Gardner is there. And then... Come on, turn the page. As an older woman, Sergeant paints her there. Oh, Elizabeth Garner is... Elizabeth Stewart... Isabella Stewart Garner is fascinating. Her life was amazing. She was very rich. She didn't fit into the Bostonian society into which she married because she was used to the New York lifestyle, was a bit more glamorous, a bit more out there, and eventually she just sort of reveled in the fact that she could scandalise a Boston, Bostonian society. Her and her husband Jack moved around a lot, did a lot of travelling. She was a massive adventuress. They went down the Nile many times. Um, they went round India. She gathered around her young, attractive male travellers and such like. And one of them even planned her travels around India and was meant to go on it with them. But eventually he disappeared and she went off with her husband. She was absolutely brilliant. She then founded the a museum, which she lived in and... The Gardner Museum is just outside of Boston, I think, or just part of Boston, it's certainly in that area. And nothing can be moved in her will. She is so autocratic that if anything is moved from the placement of where she put them, the entire museum is to be taken to pieces and sold in Paris. Anything, even a foot from where it is. So when some very, very valuable paintings, including one of the most valuable paintings ever stolen, it was stolen from these, this museum, you could actually still see the empty frames because they, they can't move them. I just think that's, I think, how cool. Sergeant had a bit of a headache painting her and it sounds like a lot of people around her had quite a headache, but she sounds absolutely fascinating. This book was brilliant. These women had very different lives and they were really fascinating. Donna Emily's writing is brilliant throughout it and I, I came to appreciate Sargent a lot more than I ever had and realised how much I enjoy his work. So I highly recommend this book to you. So far it is my favourite book that I have read in November and we are only a few days away from the end of November. So I have a feeling that this is the book I will be recommending to most people. It's a great book, I really recommend it and if you've got any questions or comments leave it down below and I will see you in a video soon. Bye!